One, two, three, action! Alright, welcome to my YouTube video where I will be trying to teach you the magic of Sentry Stalker Expand. This is going to be a, a PvP tutorial um, about Sentry Stalker Expand. This is the, uh, I would say, the most standard way to approach PvP. But in this guide I do want to teach you not only the, the build itself, but I'll try to explain you um, the, the magic behind it, the, the, the why, you know, I think in a lot of the guys it's, uh, it's very common to, to, to teach the guys, but they don't explain why you do this, what's, what's the advantage, what's the disadvantage in here. Uh, but before I do go into the, the build itself, uh, I want to start with the very basic, the very beginning of Protoss vs Protoss. And this is the opening of uh, two gates um, that is happening pretty much in every single game of PvP. There's a lot of uh, one gate expanding now coming up uh, right now, but I think two gate is still the most standard, the most safe thing to do. And the reason why the Protosses are doing the, the two gate expand is, is quite simple. It, it gives you the offensive advantage uh, as well as the defensive advantage where, to whatever you, you choose to do. It uh, gives you options basically. So if you want to uh, do a proxy build uh, or do a safe build, two gate gives you that option. With uh, trying to be aggressive, the, the two gate ways of production of stalkers or the adepts or sentries, gives you the the most amount of units with the amount of money that you can get uh, and if you want to defend the proxy the two gate also offers you that with the production of the two stalkers and then two stalkers again so like let's say opening with the four stalkers gives you enough time to uh, uh, go out on the map find that proxy location try to snipe the pylon or just buy you enough time for your uh, defensive advantage with like let's say a shield battery kick in so this is the the reason why protests start uh, uh, with a double gateway instead of a, I don't know, a forge expand, one gate expand, nexus first and so on. It basically opens up your options to do whatever you want later on in the game without falling too much uh, behind economically. So in the uh, in this uh, overall uh, build or the openings that the protesters choose to do from the two gateways, it's uh, usually a stalker stalker, a stalker sentry or adept adept. It's, it's the, the three of these. It, there's really not much that you can uh, do with any other combination like let's say ad adept sentry it doesn't really make sense stalker adept doesn't really give you any advantage uh, the reason why you go double adept is you want to harass your opponent it one shots the probes it gives you scouting possibilities and you can trade with the two adepts uh, of your opponent if you desire to uh, it, uh, they can also block this area in here with the two adept shades if you want to uh, but yeah, th this is not a, not a guy that I want to teach you about two adepts. We're going to be going for sentry and stalker. So this is the variation which I would say is the most safe, is the most standard. Um, it gives you the most information but you give up, uh, how should I say, you give up the map control and the initiative in the game. This is the, uh, the, the build that gives you the most information but you cannot really do much offensively with it. It's the best defensive build, I would say, that if you want to survive, if you want to know what your opponent is doing, if you want to prepare for the attacks, prepare for the uh, incoming harassment uh, that your opponent can throw at you, this is the build that you want to learn. It will definitely help you to improve uh, your, your MMR and just overall understanding of the game, because in PvP you do need to uh, understand what you're seeing, what you're looking for, and this is what I will be trying to teach you. So, uh, let's. Uh, I, I, I was showing you uh, this game just in the meanwhile while I was talking, but let's actually go straight to the build order in here. Uh, this is a, a match that I had versus Skillis, uh, another uh, wonderful Russian Protoss, uh, and I want to teach you exactly how to do this build uh, in here. You obviously start with a pylon on the wall uh, at 14, it's very common, very standard, obviously. And uh, you want to start with the two gateways. And then let's see, what what are we going to do in here, the gateway, and then a simulator, you can watch the supply in here, that uh, that is going to be the indicator of when to build what, basically. I'm going to put it uh, on my camera in here, as you can see, I'm moving around, scouting with the probe after the gateway. The reason why I'm starting to scout after the gateway is quite simple. 
in the current meta and pro probably in the future meta, it's it's possible that your opponent is going for a one gate expand. It's possible. Uh, so you don't want to uh, give him the opportunity to land the, uh, to uh, place down this nexus. So this pro is basically going to scout for it. If there is no uh, low ground uh, pylon or if there is no two gate expand, it's probably going to one gate expand. And this pro can just simply block the nexus with a pylon or with moving around. So that's why you send it out uh, that early. Uh, this also can uh, scout for a potential cannon rush, potential uh, any kind of weirdness that you can do. It's basically uh, sending out the, the scout to confirm what your opponent is doing. In this stance I saw that this is a double gateway opening, so I do open up with my double gateway myself. Start with a cyber core at 21 and then the, the game continues on as I keep on scouting. Now the, the, the thing that I'm looking for the most while scouting with the probe is if my opponent has the same things that I do, right? I started already with two gate and, and a pylon. I saw a second pylon in here, two gates, pylon, cyber core, two gases, two gases. I saw exactly the same thing that my opponent had. So in this situation, I am quite comfortable to know that this is not a certain uh, proxy location, uh, a certain proxy build. So I am happy to go for Sentry Stalker. Sentry Stalker is, is, a, is a great build to, to give uh, to get a lot of information. So uh, I keep my probe alive, then I start with a Sentry Stalker. Immediately as the as the uh, as the Cybercore finishes, you start with a Stalker and a Sentry, and then as soon as you do have the gas, you go uh, for the Warp Gate. I reappear in the main base because before the Sentry kicks in, before uh, Sentry is out and you can cast a hallucination to scout for your opponent. You can still uh, confirm that there is no tech building from your opponent, right? I, I go in here, I scout this location of the second pylon, which I do see. There's no tech building, there's no stargate, there's no third gateway, no robo, nor twilight council or anything. And the, uh, the units of the gateway are shortly going to be coming off, so I run away with the, with the probe. And the sentry will be my follow-up scout. So the sentry and the stalker will be... Uh, marching out of the gateway at around 2.30 2 in the in-game clock. You want to uh, immediately queue up two Stalkers behind that. Uh, so the reason why you start with the Stalker Sentry is that Stalker gives you the potential push advantage when the two Adepts come in as soon as uh, the next Stalkers come in. Like it's, it's meant to buy you time, basically. This one Stalker is to, uh, is to buy time for the Sentry to have enough energy to cast the Hallucination to confirm what your opponent is doing. So from my vision, what I saw is the free uh, free pylons, very standard, but I don't see what's ha what's happening next. I put down the nexus as uh, my uh, stalkers are being produced and I stopped pro production, as you can see at 18 out of 16, a total of 33 out of 39 supply with your uh, scouting probe still alive. And uh, you want to basically either wait or confirm what you want to do with your tech building uh, for uh, with this sentry. This sentry is crucial, the very first hallucination is the most crucial uh, the, the most crucial part. So I'm waiting for the sentry to have 75 energy and then uh, I'm gonna send it across the map to see what my opponent is doing. In the meantime, because I don't have the full information yet, I don't know if my opponent has expanded, I don't know if he maybe mind gamed me and there's you know a forward pylon with a gateway or anything like that, I put down a shield battery immediately with the probe, uh, stopped probe production. I can afford that to uh, to have a, uh, have a battery in the natural. It will finish by the time that uh, my opponent can come in here with the very first units. The free stalkers can push back the, uh, the, the potential two adept opening and always, always, of course, have a probe in the middle, uh, in the wall, patrolling to block out the adepts. After the two stalkers, uh, you queue up another set of sentries, so it will be a total of three sentries, three stalkers, and this is the, the first two stalkers that Skillos made. So I already have three stalkers in here, obviously three stalkers be two stalkers, so he cannot really push anything, but he's here just to scout, you know, he sees the three stalkers, that means I, I need a fourth unit as well from the gateway, it's likely going to be a sentry. And now my, my sentry has enough energy for a hallucination, I was waiting a little bit uh, too late, but I was a little bit occupied with the potential of stalkers in here, but this is slightly too late, but it's okay. The hallucination goes across the map, I restart the pro production, I go for the pylon on the edge of the map to scout for the potential oracles. And now this phoenix, uh, I already have the very first piece of information. You can see my nexus is almost half, well it's slightly more than halfway done. Skillless's nexus is 
almost halfway done. So that means he has invested the money somewhere else. While if he was if he was doing the same thing, uh, that would mean the nexus is you know at around the same time. So we can already see by the nexus timing that something is off. So that there is most likely a tech building or uh, more gateways uh, placed down somewhere. So I go into the main. I see no stalkers in here, no def no defenses, no no sentries, and we can immediately see a pressure of four stalkers coming in here. But we have a shield battery, three stalkers, and three sentries immediately here. These four stalkers cannot achieve too much, right? Uh, with the with the shield battery and with the almost equal stalker count, you are very well uh, set up defensively in here. So you can see he's trying to do something, but the shield battery helps you a lot. You push back this kind of uh, this kind of pressure. He's trying to buy some time, and we can see economic-wise we are one probe ahead already. Keep in mind our nexus is so much faster. Well, you know, so much. It's it's uh, what 10, 15 seconds faster. And this phoenix immediately uh, shows me the uh, the tech building. What's what was going on? Why why his nexus you know is is slightly later. So with this build you get this confirmation by 3:40 basically. And then you can choose your tech choice after scouting with it uh, with the Phoenix. You can choose your tech choice before that, but it's a, it's a, a bit risky if there's actually a, a proxy or there's more pressure. Uh, Twilight Council is the um, uh, the most common way to to start in a PvP, especially in a standard one. If you see a nexus from your opponent, you're pretty much always free to go for the Twilight Council. If you don't see a nexus from your opponent with this build, I would recommend probably a, a robotics facility, or uh, if you're planning to go for the Stargate slightly faster, and that way you will be able to defend. You can also just keep on warping in units, uh, but basically if you if you see a nexus it's 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 very much safe to go for the twilight council robotics facility is very good defensively uh, it's not the best versus a, a proxy stargate but uh, overall i think for the defensive capabilities if you want to just defend robo would definitely be the uh, the best choice in here but because i saw the nexus i chose the twilight council and then the first warpen as soon as the warp gate finishes you can see at 340, I'm first warping is going to be in my main base. Now, regardless if I would see the Stargate or not, I would still warp in here. That's uh, that's the timing for the Oracle to arrive. Uh, if it's proxy, it's going to be slightly faster. But because, you know, what I saw in the beginning of the game, I saw the, the pylon, the very first two pylons in here that are on place. Uh, and I scouted for the tech building not to be placed with the probe earlier, as you could notice that uh, I knew that I don't need a shield battery immediately in here in the wall, but the first two units warped in from the gateways are going to be uh, uh, able to defend the potential of an oracle. I am here. Let our enemy know our fury. So, the Phoenix scouts the Stargate, I see the shield battery. With the build that he chose to do, he cannot see what I'm doing. I could have a, a Stargate behind, so he needs to uh, place defensively, but he cancelled, I think, the, the shield battery. Now he's still trying to poke a bit and this look how great defensively this build is going to be against uh, a pressure with the oracle and the stalker from the front the three sentries that you build can buy you so much time and they are very threatening as you can see these force fields just prevented the, the stalkers to run away uh, my battery is low on energy because he kept trading in here but this is not a problem we can always use the battery overcharge it costs only 50 energy but it's so good now obviously I saw the Stargate, so I have positioned my units accordingly to defend, but the Stalkers uh, kind of out position, they force me to be in this position. But the Oracle will not find too much damage. I lose a couple of probes, but he is losing 3 Stalkers. And then after 4 kills of the Oracle, we are slightly behind in the probes, but that doesn't matter. We are so far ahead in the army count, right? We have 7 Stalkers to 3 sentries and our opponent is stuck with one stalker and one oracle. We are very safe to chrono boost out the, the probes, we are very safe to focus on our economy, on our tech, start blink, and so on. So I would say the build pretty much ends in here. Uh, now the game, really, like it, what you are going to do, it really depends on what you want to do, what is your plan. But basically with this build and with the traditionally how PvP is looking like, you want to secure a third base later on with the four gateways and a robotics facility and a forge and pretty much uh, defend with being stalkers. Consistently, you do want to scout with the sentries. I used a lot of force fields in here to defend against the stalkers. So always be considerate of how much energy you are going to use with the sentries, how comfortable you are knowing what your opponent is doing, if, if you actually know what your opponent is doing. 
So these sentries definitely serve a great purpose in here. And they are uh, basically your eyes of the map. Uh, a lot of the times you are going to be uh, in, in need of information on what your opponent is doing. And I am positioning my army in here. I have three stockers. I don't need a battery in here to, to defend against an Oracle. I have a battery in here that is preventing uh, any kind of damage from the frontal attack as well as from the Oracle in the middle line. And if necessary, I can position my stalkers in here and buy myself some time against uh, a frontal attack with the force wheels. As you could see in here, the Oracle did some damage, but this is really not that bad. I think this, this kind of build will definitely help you to um, to, to start a PvP. I think the start of the PvP is very, very tricky. And if you don't know what you're up against, you can definitely get blindsided. So I definitely recommend starting with a Sentry Stalker. Uh, the Sentry should be sending a hallucination at around 3.30. Uh, I will be giving you the exact build order somewhere uh, somewhere in the description. Uh, you will, you'll be able to you know write it down, copy it. And uh, I think uh, this is going to be a great kind of uh, a way for you to start the PvP. Uh, the, the key point, I would say, is to start your units uh, from the gateways as soon as the Cybercore finishes uh, and then keep the production of the gateways going. Uh, because that way you will be always uh, able to keep up with the production of your opponent. If you stop the pro production, you are sacrificing some kind of economy from your side, but you are safe against whatever they are going to do. My Cybercore finishes and I immediately queue up Stalker and a Sentry and a Warp Gate. Remember to stop the pro production later on. Um, at 33 out of 30, uh, 39 I think that was. Or basically as, uh, as your two gateway units finish, that's when you stop the pro production, you queue up the stalkers, then you place down the nexus. After you place down the nexus, you place down the shield battery. And now you're pretty much safe, right? As soon as the uh, as, as soon as the stock is finished, you're going to queue up two sentries in there, and then uh, you want to send a hallucination. Uh, if you see a stargate, place down uh, place down stalkers in here. Warp in the stalkers. Uh, two stalkers is enough to uh, shoo away the the oracle. Uh, but if you if you, the opponent can still dive in and get a couple of props if you don't have a battery, so it's important to have a pylon in here as I had to scout for the Oracle ahead of the time. You know, an additional shot or two can definitely give you uh, an, an advantage if the Oracle is harassing. If you see a Twilight Council instead of a Robo, you can join with your Twilight Council and start a Forge as well. Or you can go Robotics Facility and a Forge, that's perfectly fine as well. I think in the in the current meta of PvP, Twilight Council of, on your own is the best choice that you can do. Uh, forge for the upgrades and then, uh, well, move on really later on with the game. I can show you how the game actually went later on, how do you secure the third, but this is not necessarily in the build itself, it really depends on what you want to do and what your opponent is doing, but uh, yeah, we, we can I can show you how to secure a third base a little bit as well as an addition to this kind of build. As I defend the Oracle, there are the Stalkers in the main base, and then the, the, the Chronobus on the probes, as soon as I know that I am safe. And then the way that you secure a third base should be quite uh, easy to do. Always I remember keep this probe in here between the wall because if there's a depth coming in here you can always put down a shield battery or a pylon or whatever in here uh, to basically block the, block the possible harassment. With this build you basically have a lot of gateway units. Uh, you can put some pressure on the third base of your opponent if you're uh, free enough, if you defended the, the harassment, if you killed an oracle or something. Uh, again, these sentries give you a lot of information uh, if you constantly send the hallucinations. As you can see, I, um, uh, I defended the harassment from my opponent, I killed a lot of stalkers, so I'm free to move out on the map because even if the oracle would be in here, uh, I would have a battery in the natural and I have the potential heads up in here to warp in in my main base uh, to defend an oracle. But if my opponent would uh, come in for a second oracle, I would know that I have much more army to put even more pressure on the on the map. As I move out on the map, I'm going to secure a third nexus, and uh, this is the, the standard way really to go. I'm going to try to trade in here with the blink stalkers. But I do, I do not recommend doing this kind of moves unless you know exactly what you're doing and what kind of, if you uh, fully understand 
Uh, for you, before you go to go do these kind of moves, I would recommend to just place a down a nexus, add the additional four gateways, uh, additional two gateways to a total of four, and then place down a robotics facility, a single gas, uh, along the side with your third nexus to make sure that uh, you are safe uh, with the weapons. So I hope you guys did enjoy this kind of video. If you don't fully understand it, uh, feel free to ask questions. Uh, I hope it was uh, it was helpful for you. Uh, if you have any kind of issues with this uh, with this build as well, feel free to uh, message me on YouTube as well. Uh, if if there will be possibility for me to answer to that, uh, I'll definitely do that. If you have something that I maybe I didn't think of, if maybe I'm missing, if you have questions about the build, go ahead and ask in the in the comments as well. Hope you will uh, find it useful. I will be sharing this replay with you as well, and then uh, hope you guys will will use it use the build and hope you will get better. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next guide. Cheers. Bye bye.